So this is supposed to be still a, th a third application of bitwise operators. Um, I guess I'm just, maybe that's not even really what they are anymore. They're just programs that, I mean, you have to use bitwise operators all the time. Many programs use bitwise operators, and I guess I'm just going to show off this third one, um, which is the stupidest encryption program possible. Um, but it illustrates, you know, basically what you would need to do to write a C program to encrypt a file if you wanted to. I'm not going to read all, all this. You can pause the video and, and read the parts of it that you want. Um, so it's just uh, information for the students in my undergraduate cryptography class who have never compiled a program for, on the command line telling them how to run it. Um, so you just, this is the name of the program, this is the first file, it's a plain text, and then when you do the encryption, it's gonna it's gonna name the um, the crypt the ciphertext whatever you you put in that slot, and uh, so let's let's have a look at the program. This program uses some file I O, um, which we haven't seen yet, in which I'm gonna do uh, a video for by itself, and um, but. To make the program that I've written here comprehensible, let's go through and, and at least go over what's happening here with the file I.O. The kind of file I.O. that I'm, I'm doing here is quote-unquote low-level file I.O. because it uses um, file descriptors, which are just numbers, instead of file streams, which are the more standard way to do things. You might be familiar with this. Uh, there's a file struct defined in standard I.O. and you use a pointer to it. Anyway, it's a whole subject unto itself. Um, but with file descriptors, open files are just described by numbers. You know, if you printed this out, it would be 3. If you printed this out, it would be 4. It's because 0, 1, and 2 are reserved for standard in, standard out, and standard error. Um, so this first I, I checked to see if the, the user inputted the right number of command line arguments and I was kind of careful about that because the students who've never used the command line arguments before might make a mistake and um, so this just says you know you have to use the program this way and then uh, from I copied this is a really nice function I copied it I mean it's not super sophisticated but I got the idea and also copied the code from that book um, hacking the art of exploitation and I'm sorry that I forget uh, the name of the author but it, it just um, it prints a message to the screen uh, prepended th this fatal error thing gets prepended -print, pre then it shows the user the message and then it, it dies with uh, and the exit code you know is non-zero so the user could check the, uh, the exit value and realize that a mistake had occurred um, but anyway, so this opens a file, and then there are these weird things which I need to explain. This is just the first user command line input, which is the name of the plain text file. No mystery there, right? Um, this flag is, you can kind of see what it says. It says read only. And so that means that the mode under which this file is going to be opened is the read only mode. And I've opened this website here. This is from uh, gnu.org, software, libc, manual, HTML, node, file status flags. And this is under low level IO heading here. Maybe I should make this bigger. So um, what, those, what those things that begin with O are, are access modes. And they just mean the obvious thing. So read only, or you can do write only. Or you can open it for both reading and writing, but you have to say what mode you want to use. Um, and then there are some other possibilities. Notice this is a bitwise OR. That's because these are just integers and there are like bit flags. So there's a bit flag for being uh, write only and then there's a bit flag for that thing. And this, this says create the... F so, okay, so I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. What is this? This is the write-only one, right? So if you're going to open a file for writing, maybe you want to write to a file that doesn't exist yet. So this says, if it doesn't exist, create it. This one says, if it does exist, truncate it. And that means uh, basically clobber it. So what I'm saying is I want to overwrite it if there's something already there. 
I don't want to just change some initial segment of the ciphertext. And um, these things are permission flags. This one says that uh, the user should have the permission to uh, read the file and write the file. So you have to specify what the permissions are. So I get these file descriptors. This is the in file descriptor. This is for the output. So this will be for the plain text. This will be for the cipher text. And you have to make sure um, that something bad didn't happen. So if, um, if, if one of these returns negative one, that means there was some kind of failure. And so I'm using this fatal function that I was talking about earlier that um, prints a, a message for the user to see and then dies. And um, this is where I, I do the actual encryption. And so let me go through it, and then I'll criticize it. So I just have this single character, and I do it one byte at a time. All right. Um, so this read function is a low-level I.O. function. It takes a file descriptor, so I'm going to read from the input file, and it takes a, a buffer. Um, so this is this is just that I send it the memory address of the character buffer, and then I, I tell it how many bytes to read at most, and then what it returns is the number of bytes that it actually read. And so this while loop will terminate when it read zero bytes, right? Because zero is false. Otherwise, if it returns a non-zero value, C interprets that as true, and the while loop keeps chugging. So here's where I make the, the cipher byte of the plaintext byte. It's the stupidest possible encryption. I just XOR it with some uh, other byte, which in this case I you know I chose to, I chose it to be um, all ones. And so what I'm basically doing is taking the negation of the entire file. So that my encryption is to do the bitwise negation of the entire file. And then here's a, a write command. So this is a low-level write command. It takes a file descriptor. It takes the buffer that contains what you want to write. And it takes the number of bytes to write. And then um, it returns some. It returns negative 1 if some kind of error happened. So in that case, you know, blow up the program and, and tell the user why. And you can, you can I mean, this program is made to be critiqued because it's the, sort of the simplest possible encryption program. You do have to do something similar if you want to write a more sophisticated encryption program. But um, one thing that makes this program slow is that I'm doing this write, I'm doing file I.O. inside the loop. And it would really speed things up if I if I use some kind of internal buffer here and then did the file writing afterwards. It would go like a million times faster. Um, but it works, and you can encrypt things with it. So should we actually do that? I can compile the file here. Uh, TBE is for trivial byte encryption, which is something I just made up. And um, so I've got hello.txt here, which is a little message to my students. And you can see what it says on the first few lines is blah, 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 blah. So let's encrypt that thing. a.out, hello, hello.site cipher and now what does the the cipher look like it's gonna have a lot of non-printing ASCII characters and some other things um, okay so now let's try to do the uh, the decryption is the same as the encryption that's because if you XOR twice it, it's like doing nothing so what it's gonna do is it's gonna XOR the cipher text with um, it's gonna negate it again basically so the negation of the negation is the original thing and if you believe in the principle of double negation, then you will believe that what we will get is the original. But I don't want to overwrite what I already have. So let me just call this a ridge.txt. And if you look at that, let's just see, is that English? Yeah, it looks like English. And is there any difference between what I just came up with and the original thing? No, there's none. And you can use it to encrypt more sophisticated things. Actually, I gave um, the students an encrypted copy of Bruce Snyder's book. Uh, pretend I didn't say that. And then, you know, they have to decrypt it if they want to use it. So that's all. That's the end of the video.